What's up, Code Ponies? Are any of you guys struggling to find your first job as a developer? I know it feels impossible, but it really isn't. For a little backstory, I'm an IBM developer with no degree, and I've been in the industry full time for about two years now. I didn't get my start at IBM, I started off at a local law firm at, for around 45k a year. And I know that's not much, but you know that you gotta start somewhere. So today I'm gonna show you my initial resume and portfolio that landed me my first job, which I was over the moon to get. My little disclaimer, I do not represent IBM and any thoughts or opinions in this video are wholly my own. So before we get to the roasting, I just wanna suggest that you watch to the end of the video to learn how I actually got a job with this terrible resume and portfolio. So here's my uh, first resume, trying to be a developer after quitting college. The only thing I've edited here is the um, phone number and email and address. So, I mean, you guys can probably find that stuff anyway, but, you know, whatever. Let's just move on to employment. I have my only job here as head sushi chef. There's more, but I just wanted to keep it simple because I didn't have anything relevant anyway. So I might as well just put the the best one, I guess. And uh, I actually did this for a lot longer, but this was at the most recent restaurant. So here I have my education. I w graduated high school. I dropped out of LSU. And I also dropped out of BRCC. But at this time, I didn't know if I was going to go back or not. And I mean, I say expected December of 2018, but I knew at that point that I wasn't going to get it at the end of 2018. And first impression, this as someone who's like hired developers before, this is very short. And I mean, there's nothing really relevant. And I just, it seems like if you look at the skills here, I guess I just thought it was a good idea to throw in every technological term that, or technology that I had ever used. Wow, actually, you notice here, I even have a typo. I mean, it just says knowledge, agile development. So, <laughs> I mean, clearly, I didn't proofread this. And also, that I, I know for a fact that I didn't know anything about agile development at that point in time. For the law firm, local law firm that did hire me, this probably sounded like I knew a lot of stuff, or I was claiming that I knew a lot of things. I mean, even in the interview, they actually asked me to pull out my, my portfolio, which I was fully ready to do, which uh, we're going to go over next. So I, I'd give this resume a 3 out of 10, only because I, like, I've, res I've checked out a lot of other resumes, and I've seen worse, to be honest. But I mean, it's definitely not, it's definitely below average, for sure. Because I at least named some technologies and some rel like relevant like languages. It's just that I don't have the the degree, and I have no prior experience. Also, also I didn't. It, it seems really plain, you know. It's not very eye catching, but it it's not terrible. Like I've seen some really really bad resumes where people just. I don't know, it's just like they're writing a letter or like they don't they don't try to try to play themselves up at all. They don't try to sell themselves at all. So we're going to move over to my portfolio site now. As you can see, I didn't even have a domain. And I mean, it looks okay. I haven't seen this in a long time and still looks pretty clean. I don't like this picture in the middle right here with the little paragraph. Fun fact, I had like no pictures of myself that were recent, so I just threw in my wedding picture. <laughs> Full stack developer with practical experience in web development and JavaScript from an object-oriented background, fully devoted to the craft of code. So I sound like a tryhard for sure. I'm cringing, like that was very cringy as I read that. So I'm never going to use that phrase again. Wow, this contact form is terrible. Should not not take up that whole the whole page like that. 
Okay. I mean, the flutter looks okay. I just seems it did anything. I guess not. So let's see if these projects still work. Okay. So this is one of the portfolio pieces that I showed them. I guess the API doesn't work anymore for the quotes, but it's supposed to change color and have a new quote each time I click the button. They just glanced over that one. The weather app. Okay, this isn't Westminster. I don't know, not using any kind of VPN, so um, I don't know why it says that. They thought that was okay. You know, getting someone's location was pretty cool for them. This is my Wikipedia viewer. There's supposed to be a big Wikipedia picture up here, but I guess that's gone. Let's see if I'm on here. Oh, that's a random Wikipedia page. Let's see if I can just press enter. No. So I guess I hard-coded a negative margin value up here. Okay. And let's see this. Um, this API doesn't work anymore. And there's not even a fifth one here, okay? All right, I mean, that's pretty cheap, but it just go links to that section. Overall, I, I would give this portfolio site now, looking back, um, maybe from like an objective point of view, I would give it a three. It's pretty crappy. It doesn't really tell the user anything about me other than I'm a full stack. Supposedly, this right, this paragraph right here, when I have these crappy projects that I literally just just used my projects on uh, Free Code Camp to populate this. And what really impressed the the law firm was this other site that I made. For, uh, as a freelance job, it was msg.lsu.edu. And it was just a WordPress website, but I mean, they were just impressed that I had a, a live website, I guess. And also I have this page where I show, I custom co coded this in HTML and CSS. It's just a table of the uh, professors or the ex-professors. I think they're all retired now. So how did I even get a job with this crappy resume and portfolio? Well, I mean, I did get really lucky. And you know what they say, how luck is the intersection of opportunity and preparation? Well, I feel like I kind of hit that intersection. I've been studying all night, every night for months at, on end at that point. And I was just, I just said, screw it. I'm just going to apply to every job that I can find. I went on to ZipRecruiter and I found this really ambiguous listing that was for a web developer. I applied and there were other people in, you know, in the ro their roster that they were interviewing, but I was cheap. And also I had, I mean, they didn't really know what they were looking for. And I was able to like persuade them that I could do what they wanted, what they needed. So that's how I got my first job as a developer outside of the service industry. So if you're bored, just check out one of these other videos here. And if you like this video and you want to see more like it, please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And by the way, to address the people that would rather starve than take the pay that I did for my first job as a developer. For a little context, my job before that, I was making 36,000 a year as a sushi, sushi chef. And I mean, I was willing to take anything uh, outside of the restaurant industry. And the way I see it, my skills didn't really measure up to like 100k, even 60k. 
at that point. So I'm just working my way there. So this is Code Pony out. See you guys later. Peace.